begin this chat by talking a little bit about one of my favorite icons. She was a screen legend in the history of American cinema. She was a permanent member of every best dressed list internationally. And it's odd but true that she is amused to designers and she's a mentor to women world over, even two decades after her passing. Born to a Dutch aristocrat, she was a ballerina by age five. And when she grew up, she was the woman women wanted to be and the woman men wanted to marry. That's not all. She dedicated so much of her life to working with UNICEF, where she worked closely with the most disadvantaged communities of South America, Africa, and Asia. Just talking about her makes me proud to be a woman. I don't think there are any awards for guessing who I'm talking about. I think you've already guessed it. I'm talking about Audrey Hepburn. Fashion's favorite muse and UNICEF's goddess rolled into one. What I'm trying to get at today is this. A ballerina can save a life. A beautiful woman can light up the hopes of an entire nation. The only reason you think she can't is because as human beings we're conditioned into understanding and we find it hard to reconcile the two. The gloss with the grit, the fluff with the stuff. But here I am to tell you that you really, really can. We find it hard to accept and reconcile women with success. In the same way, it's really incredulous and hard to digest that a glamorous woman can really change the world. Ask me why. The answer is really, really simple. Because change really is not the privilege of a few. It's the choice of many. So whether you are a collegian, a corporate, a babe, a bahu, small, big, rich, poor, there is a latent change maker that lies in all of us. And honestly, there has never been a better time to do something about it than now. It's a really sad truth that gender stereotypes are very deeply entrenched in our psyche. Sometimes so deep and at such a subconscious level that we don't even realize it. Imagine this. Barack Obama and Michelle Obama step out one night for a dinner and they go to a local eatery. It's quite out of the ordinary for them. As they step into the eatery, the owner of the eatery requests the president's secret service to have a few words with Michelle Obama in private. She obliges. When she comes back to the table, Barack says, so what did that man want from you? And she said, you know what? He was an old boyfriend of mine. We were college sweethearts and he wanted to marry me. Barack Obama smiles and tells her, well, if you'd have been married to him today, you would have been the owner of this amazing restaurant. And she says, no, darling. If I would have been married to him today, he would have been the president of the Amer uh, United States of America. <clears throat> well, you can laugh at this, but on a completely different day, you will shed a tear or you may even shudder when you are exposed to reports of gender insensitivity and inequality. History tells us that women who really made it happen were tough, like Jhansi Ki Rani, were valiant, like Joan of Arc, or closer home and closer to now, were doggedly relentless, like Medha Patkar. And you know what? I bow to all of them. <coughs> but the marvels of telecommunication and the marvels of the digital age mean that even I can do my part in impact and change. Even I can do my part in saving this world in a small or in a big way while staying true to my role as the editor of a fashion magazine. <clears throat> I don't really need an armor. I can do it wearing these stilettos. I'm a woman. I'm an editor of a leading fashion magazine in India. And I conceived a women's empowerment initiative and reached out to over 10 million people from the span of October 2014 to Jan 2015. <clears throat> I did most of this from my cute little office in the bylanes of Ballad Estate. Before we talk about how I did it, let's talk about the why I did it. According to the National Crime Records Bureau of India, two women are raped every 60 minutes in this country. Every six hours, a woman is beaten, burnt, or driven to commit suicide. In 2013, 
the incidences of rape rose by 35.2%. This is all pretty violent stuff. But just remember something, violent also takes place in subtle forms. There are studies that tell you globally, a man and a woman in the same position, the woman will earn anything from 10 to 30% less than the man. There are studies that tell you, and there are lots of incidences where you've heard and you've probably laughed when a, when a she boss has been mistaken for a subordinate or worse, branded a barracuda, poor Sheryl Sandberg. Clearly, it's bad if you're young, but it's worse if you're young, smart and attractive. As a woman, as a mother, as a daughter, as a daughter-in-law and as a wife, and as the editor of a magazine that is produced largely for women and by women, I was cognizant of the fact that we could no longer take women's issues and relegate them to lengthy debates and conversations. Time for that is over. It truly warrants action, and it warrants action from each one of us. Whilst violence against women was clearly the trigger for us to start this initiative, we dialed back to a lot of core issues regarding women and empowerment. Ladies in this room and men, women's empowerment is not just about physical trappings. It's not good enough if your man does not abuse you. Empowerment is empowerment of your senses, of your thoughts, of your decisions, of your finances, of your, of your right to live your life on your terms and to pursue your dreams to the optimum. We believe true empowerment is really a state of mind, a lens with which you view the world and a lens which the world views you with. I drew strength from the fact that I head a fashion magazine and fashion is what comes to me most naturally. So I first reached out to all my circle of influences, the entire fashion industry, called all of them, met all of them. In the span of a month, we had 75 of the countries and world's leading designers who had come on board, right from your Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Chanel, Prada, Closer Home, Tarun Tahiliani, Sabia Sachi Mukherjee, uh, Manish Malhotra, each one of them came on board. We had 75 of them. They each donated one article of clothing, which we then tied up with Amazon and auctioned off for charity. Then we tied up with Give India, which is a non-profit organization, which works very closely with women's issues. We, of course, chose the three core issues that were important for us, which was education, which was, um, you know, domestic violence, and it was vocational training. We raised over 30, 35 lakhs just for Give India. This was our core circle of influence. We reached out beyond the circle of influence and reached out to the icons of sports, films, um, corporate business, politicians, you name it. I think some of the couple of the earlier meetings were most invigorating. I remember meeting Sudha Murthy and Within about half an hour, she wrote a check of five crores towards vaccination for underprivileged women with respect to cervical cancer. We then met Barakha Dutt, who came on board and, and provided a scholarship to young women journalists with the entire backing of the NDTV network. We met Mira Nair, who then chose to sponsor girl children to study filmmaking at her school in South Africa, wearing a very, very dapper designer sweatshirt Karan Johar's eyes lit up when I shared my vision with him and soon enough he became one of the biggest champions of the initiative and supported us on social media through and through. These were all the smooth ones. We went in slightly nervous when we had to meet Amir Khan. It was over a very long Sunday meeting with a lot of weight where his agent had warned me, you know how Amir is, Priya, go up to him, make a pitch and he'll either say yay or nay. And if he says nay, don't try to convince him because nothing can convince him. So really, really nervous. <clears throat> when he walked into the room, he carried with him a big tub of ice cream. And over the entire tub, by the way, which all of him, he finished, <laughs> he came on board and he agreed to support and be the voice of our radio campaign, something that nobody has done before. And we managed to get from him a month full of radio spots. Here's what came out of that meeting. आइए प्रार्थना करें प्रार्थना करें कि विद्या की पढ़ाई लिखाई बंद ना हो शिक्षा स्कूल जाए संध्या शाम को सही सलामत घर लौट आए डीजी पैरों तले कुचली ना जाए 
प्रीत जिससे प्रेम करती है उसी से उसकी शादी हो नूर को दुनिया में आने का मौका मिले निशा रात में अच्छी तरह सो पाए राखी कहीं दुख से टूट न जाए रेखा घर की रेखा पार कर सके दृष्टि घर से बाहर की दुनिया देखे पलक पे कभी आंसू ना आए जितने सुंदर नाम हम अपनी बेटियों को देते हैं क्यों ना उन्हें हम उतना ही सुंदर जीवन भी दें ये थी मेरी प्रार्थना I thought I had a great idea when I went up to him. I said, "Hey, will you act in one of our public service announcement films free of cost?" He came back to me with a better idea. He says, "Why don't I turn a photographer for you and click images of some of the most amazing women in my life and you can sell it off for charity?" Sangeeta Jindal was another surprise. When I met her, within literally 10 minutes of my first formal meeting with her, she wrote me a check of 20 lakhs. wanting to sponsor one of the public service announcement films i am sure all of you all have seen both the films that went fairly viral on youtube of course the road to these 180 pledge makers was not without road blocks take for example mr a r rahman we first hand experience what it is like to stalk a celebrity we stalked him chased him relentlessly followed him wined and dined his managers everything it took Four months later, Mr. Rahman conceded and came on board as one of our pledge makers. He dedicated his song "Ladli" to the initiative. The song, which has been beautifully penned by none other than former Union Minister <coughs> Mr. Kapil Sibal. Next up was tackling the corporates, getting these guys to put their money where their might is. Happy to say. there is a heart there a very very big heart so you guys out there if you're raising funds put aside all shame and just go and do it the apollo group of hospitals gave us free mammograms for women for 3 months across all apollo hospitals <coughs> people like ashok wadwa of ambit has pledged to take on financial tutorials to help women understand and manage their personal finances better um other punawala Dipali Goenka again huge corporates who came and supported us by sponsoring our films it was interesting what started off as a small idea changed our cumulative karma for many of us in my office we were all journalists we had all stepped out of our comfort zones we had all charted unfamiliar territory whether it was traveling to raigad in a village without electricity or then hosting a documentary screening on a film on rape for 300 of mumbai cops so how did we really make this journey from gloss to grit well to begin with it took 6 to 8 months it took an army of 40 crazy people it took a lot of caffeine overload and sleep deficit and sushi takeaway lots of small miracles begging always helps at the end of it all it took one just one great idea why am i standing here i am standing here because i want to tell you that this can be your story to tell you could be standing here and telling this story you know you may have an idea and i'm certain most of you in this room do you may have a great idea but often it is the fear of execution that stops us most of us may not have the bandwidth to campaign physically or may not have inroads into philanthropy but guys this is where i step in to tell you promise you and assure you that all you need to do is be informed be aware and be charged take it one step at a time and that really is step 1 why don't you use your area of expertise why don't you use your area of skills we have enough evidence around us to really inspire us think about bono He uses a lot of his concerts and the sales of tickets to fund charities that help with the Sarajevo crisis or AIDS benefit. Closer home, my pal Ranveer Singh decided to donate proceeds from his AIB rose ticket sales to our to our initiative. They did what they do best. Like I suggested earlier, thankfully today, the do-gooder has more than one face. The do-gooder today has more than one uniform. The rule of the game is that there really aren't rules. 
The charm of an idea lies in an execution. Do not be limited by who you are or what you do. You could be a dancer, a DJ, a college student, a magician, an illusionist, and each one of you has it in you to impact change. You can do it from Skype, you could launch a Twitter campaign, you can do it from Facebook. A Twitter campaign started a revolution in Egypt. Think of what we can do. I did it from my office as an editor of a fashion magazine with a team of very crazy women who lived, breathed, and dreamt the same dream that I dreamt for six months. And on my last note, this really is a message to all the women in this room. Actually, the men should also be listening in. We talk about self-empowerment. We talk about empowerment. Empowerment is a journey that begins from within. It is absolutely critical at the age y'all are, at the stage y'all are, know yourself, know your aura, know your body, know your finances, know your rights. Get online and know your constitutional rights. Know what works for you. Know what your freedom of thought, speech and action should be. Find your rainbow. You all have a rainbow that each one of you can chase. I did my chasing in these shoes. By the way, these shoes insisted on joining me today for this talk. So happy empowering. I'm just going to leave you with a small film that we made. And I really, really hope it inspires you guys. Thank you.